I've had this fat bike in my Amazon wishlist for a while now, but my focus is typically cross-country racing, structured training, pounding out base miles, power intervals, blah blah blah. So the fat bike idea always took a back seat. Well, somehow this big brown box showed up in my driveway, and I thought a few of you might want to find out what's in it. So let's open it up and find out. Now if you're looking for a fat bike, a quick internet search will present you with several entry-level options. Most are all steel, and most sport really cheap components. This Gravity Bullseye Monster is all aluminum with a rigid steel fork. It's still a $500 fat bike, but the question is, how cheap is that and is there real value here? The Gravity spec sheet checked all my boxes, but it came with a few surprises too. Some were pleasant, some were not so pleasant, and some were just plain f***ing bizarre. A flask? What the hell is a flask doing in my bike box? The bike came with a set of pedals, if you can call them that. They're worthless, maybe about six cents a pound of scrap metal. With the pedals came reflectors, which immediately found their way into the trash, some rim tape, and a spare mech hanger too. Now if you're new to mountain biking, you'll want to check out my other videos on tubeless tire setup and why you should care about that spare mech hanger. As you can see, the bike came about 90% assembled. I had to attach the handlebars and connect the front brakes. I also had to find some new pedals. These were some old flats I had laying around. The bike came with a comfortable WTB saddle, which was already attached to the seat post, and it slid right in. She took about 20 minutes to assemble, but here's my new bike. All I have to do now is air up the tires and torque check all the bolts. I did some research and found that for my weight, which is about 200 pounds, I should start with 8 pounds in the front and a little more in the rear. I chose 10 pounds in the rear. This did prove to be a little low, but it was a great place to start. Remember, this is an aluminum bike, so if you buy it, you might also consider buying a small torque wrench, if you don't already own one. Now you don't need a torque wrench, but it's a really good idea to own one. One last personal preference was to remove the reflectors from the wheels, and we're ready to go ride. Overall, for 500 bucks, I'm ecstatic with this bike, but the narrow handlebars and the anemic mechanical disc brakes both have to go. The 2x8 drivetrain is adequate, the Shimano Olivio front derailleur and SRAM X4 rear derailleur, as well as a Shimano cassette don't compare to the XTR gear that I'm used to, but I'll work with it for now. If you want to see how I upgraded this bike, click on the video link in the top right. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and click the logo to subscribe. I hope you had a great ride. Let's do it again sometime.